So I'm leaving for Texas in about 18 hours. And as a last minute decision, I decided to pull everything out of the Jeep, do a complete cleaning in the back and check all my gear, repack it and see if I'm missing anything. And more importantly, see if there's anything that I really just don't need to take with me. And so I thought that I would hang out in the garage with you guys today and uh, talk about some gear and show you a couple of little small updates that I've done to the Jeep. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad and today I'm in the garage and uh, I kind of got a wild hair and decided I needed to pull everything out of the Jeep and do a deep cleaning back there and repack it before I leave on a five day trip where I'm going to go through New Mexico, Texas and then back through Arizona for a couple video projects I'm working on. I think you guys will enjoy it so there's going to be some cool trail videos. But I'm going solo and when you are out uh, on camping trips and off-roading trips by yourself you know, you're dependent on yourself and nobody else, which means I need to make sure that I have all the gear that I need uh, to be self-sustained. And so that's why I want to just double check uh, that I have everything I need and see if there's anything I don't need. So first things first, uh, I'm going to start uh, cleaning the back of the Jeep and then, uh, and then we'll take a look at some gear. And there's a couple things I've done to the Jeep recently. I think you guys are going to really enjoy checking out. So we'll take a close up look at those. Much, much better. Uh, there was a lot of dust in here. I guess we've been off-roading a little bit. Maybe I should just go to the mall more often and I wouldn't have to worry about that, but much cleaner. I'm just using uh, warm water with just a dash of uh, dish detergent. But before I start cleaning the back, let me talk a little bit about what's in here. And so uh, the, I have the Molly panel on the back of the seat and on the back here I have a basic first aid kit, a tourniquet. I got a little utility bag with some chargers and stuff in here. Uh, I have these very cool trauma shears that fold. I love these things. These things are amazing. They're expensive, but I use the heck out of them. And then I have uh, four handheld radios. I have one CB, two GMRS, and one ham handheld radio. And I just did a communications video recently. And if you're interested in hearing more about those communications, I will leave a link down below. And then up top here, I have the Elements fire extinguisher. This is so much nicer than a standard big old bottle of CO2 that you carry around. Uh, these last quite a, a while and they are super compact and easy to use. And of course I have a knife on the back there. So that's pretty much all I have right in here that I'm not gonna pull out. I do have my power station which charges the fridge, but I'm finally, finally ready to install a permanent system. I have been accumulating all the pieces and parts over the last couple months. And so now I've got a Red Arc Manager 30. I've got a Battleborn battery. I've got all the wiring and fuses and connections. And so when I get home from this trip, I'm gonna start working on that. So this will probably be the last time that I have a portable battery system in here. All right, let me clean the back. Let me show you two cool things back there. All right, all clean here in the back and I've got all the drawers out and what I'm gonna do is pull everything out of the drawers, give the drawers a good cleaning and then we can start repacking everything, putting everything back in the Jeep and, uh, and we'll talk about a little bit about the gear. Okay, I mentioned there were a couple new things. This is the Outback Adventure Table. Of course, I've talked about this many times on the channel because I've had one of these in, in pretty much all my Jeeps for a long time. But they just came out with this new magnetic strip here that attaches to the table. How cool is that? If you are out camping and you need a place to put your utensils or you're using this for a workstation, you need to throw some wrenches or some screwdrivers up there, that is pretty slick. I love it when companies uh, innovate things and you know, the tailgate was, table was already pretty good. They just made it a little bit better. Now, the other cool thing is 
my tailgate is sitting on a brand new Terraflex hinge that I installed a couple weeks ago, and this thing is beefy. And no doubt that this is gonna hold up for a long time to come. It allows you to run 39 inch tires and so I am running a 37 inch, so now I just have peace of mind, but I might be going just a little bit bigger uh, because winter is coming and we're gonna be heading to places where there's a little more mud and I think we need something a little more aggressive than these all terrains. So, all right, now the Jeep's all clean. Let's go look through our gear and pack it back up. All right, the Jeep is finally clean to my satisfaction and now we just need to go through all the gear put it back in the Jeep, and then uh, I'm gonna be ready to go for tomorrow. Now, before we start taking a look at all this gear, I just wanna precursor it with, there's a lot of stuff here that is nice to have, a little bit above and beyond, some luxury items. At the end of the day, all you really need is, if you're gonna go off-road, you need some basic safety gear, some first aid gear, recovery gear, some tools, those are important things. And then if you are gonna go camping, you need shelter, you need something to keep you warm, and you need food and water. And so those are kind of the basics. And a lot of that stuff can fit in a very small bag uh, if you really think about it and downsize it. But if you're gonna be going out further and further and you're gonna be more remote and you wouldn't mind having a few more creature comforts, that's where some of this gear comes in. So I just wanted to kind of disclaimer that here initially. This, what I have on the top of the table is kind of those basics. So let me just kind of start Start from right to left and then I'll, and we'll go from there. So on the right, this is a Lifesaver water can. This has a filter built in, a little under five gallons and it's got a spray nozzle on it. it. Works well, it does a good job and it's easy to fit in the back of the Jeep and it holds up really well. Then I have a sleeping bag. It's a, I think this is a 15 degree sleeping bag which I have had for several years. And I have a pillow, which is an inflatable pillow, but what I like about this pillow is it's not just air, there's actually foam inside. So you inflate it, but there's foam in there, and that kind of helps keep your head warm because if you're laying on nothing but air and it's cold outside, your head isn't gonna be very warm. Unlike uh, my air mattress, which is just straight air, uh, but, uh, but this is an air mattress I've had. I was, man, I've had this for a long, long time. I used to backpack with this and it's held up great. Uh, and then this is just a small blanket. What I like about this blanket is it compacts really nice, but when you take it out, it fluffs up. And boy, you put this over your sleeping bag on a really cold night, it's amazing just how much warmer you are. Plus these things are great uh, when you're sitting outside the campfire, just kind of wrap them around you when you're sitting in the chair. Uh, they're really nice to have. I usually have a couple of these, but I think one on this trip is gonna be plenty. And then this is just a microfiber towel. So, you know, you wash your hair and whatnot and still dry off. So that's, uh, th this, these things all go in that top drawer in the goose gear. Uh, so I think that's it there. Uh, here I've got my tool bag and I have done a full video on what is in my tool bag. Although I need to take a look and there's probably uh, some nuts and bolts th uh, that I need to replace here over the last few months. There's been a few things that we've had to repair out on the trail. So I will just make sure that I have uh, updated nuts and bolts in there. I think I need a, probably a couple more zip ties. Uh, this right here is just a battery charger uh, because the last thing you want to do is find yourself in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery. At least having the ability to jumpstart your vehicle is super nice. Recovery gear. Uh, basic recovery gear, you know, a winch on the front of your vehicle, a toe strap, and then anything else in the above and beyond is kind of nice. I'm a fan of soft shackles. Uh, they're just a little bit safer to use. So that is just a big old canvas recovery bag. Both the recovery bag and the tool bag go underneath my goose gear platform because I don't access those very often. So having those underneath isn't such a big deal. This bag here is just for my air tools. So I do have CO2 in the back, and I don't plan on airing up and airing down a lot this trip, but having the ability to air up and air down when you're out there is super important. I do plan on installing a dual ARB air compressor, so when I wire up that Red Arc system, I'm actually gonna run wires for the ARB air compressor at the same time, so I probably still gonna use CO2 because I love CO2, I love the convenience of it, uh, but we'll see. Maybe I will end up just going full on air compressor down the road, I don't know. Uh, first aid gear, so 
I, I've said it a million, million times, you need to have a first aid kit in your vehicle and you need to have some basic first aid training. Now I have that small one back there. This one is one that I've built, uh, being a Navy corpsman, there's just certain things that I like to have, a little bit extras uh, when I'm out on the trail, but you need to have a first aid kit and you need to take some basic first aid courses. Having a seatbelt cutter, having a fire extinguisher, those things are essential pieces of gear, even if you're just gonna go out on a day trip. Okay, uh, for food, so I've already loaded up the fridge, so I've got a lot of goodies in there. So I've got a salmon steak and a tuna steak, and I think I got uh, some carne asada that I'm gonna cook up uh, out there and a couple other things. And then these are just some soft boxes where I'm putting dry goods, all my seasonings. I, I love the soft boxes because they just don't tear up the plastic when you throw them in the back and they're easy to pack and these will fold down flat if you need to. These are from a, a local company called Step 22. I really love the passion that they have for making storage equipment and, uh, and their gear is pretty good. So I've just got some, some goodies in here and if you have not tried the double nutty nutter butters. It's a win, I'm telling you right now, it's a win. Okay, let me put all this stuff in the Jeep and then, uh, and then we'll take a look at some of this other gear that I've just got lying all over the place. Now my shelter for this trip is not a rooftop tent because I don't have one up there. I have one on the trailer. I'm not taking the trailer this trip and I do not want to go through the trouble of pulling it off the trailer and putting it up here. So I'm taking a ground tent and this is a shift pod mini. I've had this for about a year. I got a really good deal on this a while back and if you've never seen one of these, they're the space age looking aluminum foil looking tents and this thing is really cool. I've been very impressed with this. Now I have a swag which is one of those you know Australian style ground tents that's got the mattress on there. Those are pretty compact. I've got a nice hiking tent that I've had for years and that thing is small and lightweight. Um, but I really just like this tent. And the good thing about this is if I want to, I can just strap it to the roof rack or it can fit uh, inside the Jeep from door to door. It's just the perfect fit back there. It's a little bulky, but for me, I really like this tent. It works out well. So I'm taking this and uh, again, we'll talk more on that. Okay. This is the drawer that's above my refrigerator and it's kind of my cleaning gear slash junk drawer. So I'm just gonna pull everything out of here and why not just show you what's in my junk drawer? Seems a little weird. Uh, okay, uh, this is uh, an extra cable for my Dometic fridge. So this one is for 110, just in case I have any issues with the 12 volt. Uh, I can always have that as a backup because I don't wanna lose food. I've got a bunch of gallon size Ziploc bags. I always carry a bunch of trash bags. Pack it in, pack it out. Hey. Um, but one conversation that we've been having recently is you know, trash waste versus water waste. And so there's this balance that we're trying to figure out. If you are at camp and uh, you're having a meal, should you be washing dishes and wasting the water or be using paper plates and throwing them away in the trash? I'm kind of leaning more in the future going towards paper plates uh, because one, uh, you can just put them in the trash and the next day if you happen to hit a gas station, it's easy just to throw those away versus having to do dishes all the time where you're wasting a lot of water, that's extra water you have to carry. Plus, you know, what are you gonna do with that uh, dirty water? You gotta find a good place to dump that. So I don't know, we, we've been having that conversation a lot lately. So I always carry plenty of trash bags. Speaking of soap, 
Make sure that you bring some good biodegradable soap with you. This is good for dishes and for washing your hands. I've got uh, more Ziploc bags. I've got some microfiber towels for drying dishes. I got a couple headlamps in here, a sponge, a lighter. This guy, oh, I don't have paper towels to show you. Oh, wait a minute, yes I do, hang on. This is super cool, guys. Okay, sorry, I just jumped out of frame. I'm not supposed to do that. This is something uh, that we found at a kitchen store and I bought two of these. Check this out. That is perfect for holding your paper towels at camp and this will hook on to the side of a fridge or cabinets or just about anything you want to and then your paper towels have a place to be. So I really like that. I, I wish I could tell you the name of it or even the store that I got it at, but finding little things that uh, help you solve solutions like that, always a good thing. Uh, these are tie downs and I like these little tie downs because they are soft. They're not going to mar up stuff and so I can tie down, you know, the tents, the water jug, the, the soft boxes. It's got a lot of adjustability. These are really pretty strong and so I always have a few of these. I, I bring extra just in case but I have enough in there that I can just strap things down to the Goose Gear platform. Uh, glass cleaner because when you're filming uh, you guys don't like to look through a dirty window. Uh, again, more Ziploc bags. Um, it's a Mylar blanket, just in case. I, I don't know why that's in there. Uh, this is a fire starter, and so these are like a little disc that you can use to light a fire if you're having a hard time lighting a fire. I have a backup lighter. I got some wipes. I've got some uh, DEET bug spray, which, man, when we were in Washington, we used the heck out of the bug spray. And then I have two head nets, and so these are nets that go over your head. I have a bunch of these. I've been carrying these with me for years and years, and you know what? I've used them all of one time, but they're small enough. They don't take up enough room that I need to worry about that. And then I have a bunch of lanterns, and I got this solar lantern. I like this because you can turn, uh, turn it to red, and so you have a red light at night. It's nice to put this on the ground if you're worried about a trip hazard. I've got a rain jacket. I've got some extra batteries for the headlamps, and I've got some baby wipes. That's what's in my junk drawer. Let's go see what else I got. All right, this is the last goose gear drawer, and this is the last little bit of gear that I need to find a home for. And then uh, there's just a couple things in the front seat that I will show you guys, and then we'll wrap it up. So what I have here is, this is a foldable toilet, and I've had this for a long time. This is a great little compact toilet. It's got three little legs on there, and you just use these little bags that have this chemical in there that allows things to be absorbed, and you just throw this in your trash. Works out really well and it's very compact. Of course, we got plenty of toilet paper. Uh, I do have a solar panel that I will bring with me. Uh, again, once I get that new setup, I may bring a solar panel, but we'll do something maybe a little different. Uh, I have my fan. This is a little USB fan. If you've been following me for a long time, I have had this uh, for a long time on hot nights like I'm planning it to be in Texas. Put this in the tent, put it right on you, hook it up to one of these external batteries and that thing will run multiple nights and keep you somewhat cool. It's supposed to be in the 90s uh, when we get to Texas and so it's gonna be pretty warm. Okay, this is a propane fire pit and this is a very small one and I actually am gonna be using this one for the first time. We've had a larger one that we've been taking with us on the trailer, but this one is really nice and compact and fits in the Jeep, no problem. And the cool thing is, is I have this adapter which allows me to use these little propane canisters. And so I'll be curious to see, you know, if I can use one of these propane canisters and run this for two or three hours at night, that is perfect. There are so many limitations right now in the US about having campfires. And even if I could have a campfire, the amount of wood that I would have to take that would take up way more space than this. Uh, this is a pretty practical solution and when it comes time to, you know, put your fire out and go to bed, you just turn it off. So 
I'll be experimenting with this and see how well it runs. Uh, obviously, uh, a couple of these are going to be for cooking. Uh, I've got my little camp chair. This is not my bougie rocking chair that uh, I bought that's just like my wife's. This is just a chair that I've had forever. This is my bamboo table, which is a good table, man. Again, I've had a lot of this stuff for a long time, but that's, uh, that's a good table right there. Okay, in here is, this is where the important stuff is. The coffee. Uh, this is Got Your Six uh, Maple Bourbon. This has been kind of my vice lately. I really, I really love this coffee, even through the bag. I can smell it right now. It's really, really good. Uh, I do have my small percolator and I have a small French press. I'm doing more French press stuff. Uh, and the reason for that is I, I love percolated coffee, but on a cold morning, it can take a long time for the coffee to start percolating where you can heat up the water enough to make it work with a French press. And so you actually save a bit of time if you just heat the water and use this. French press coffee is still pretty good. So uh, I do have a bunch of paper plates. We talked about that. And then in here is kind of my camp cooking setup. And so I've got, you know, my jet boil, got my pot, my pan, all that good stuff. Oh, look, the handle came off. That's not cool. Got my jet boil in here. There's a big old pot in there. And so I'll be cooking on this trip. Uh, that's a good little system. Uh, coffee mugs. I got my little utensil guy. And then we have a collapsible bucket. So it's always nice to have that. And I really like these. They're cheap and uh, very, very, very convenient. I think that's it, guys. Okay. Let's hop inside, well, let me put this all the way, and then I'll hop inside the Jeep and I'll just show you a couple of last little things. Back of the Jeep is clean. It's packed up pretty well. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Just a quick double check up front to make sure I've got what I need. So I've got my iPad mini. I've uploaded my GPX files so I know where I'm going and I'm not gonna get lost. I've got my Garmin inReach and I do have the charger for it. I have forgotten the charger before in the past. My ham radio is all good to go. I've got some Tic Tacs. In the bottom of the center console, I have the winch controller and I have the charger for the GMRS radios. And then up here, I have tire deflators, hand sanitizer, chapstick, Tic Tacs, more Tic Tacs, and very importantly, a seatbelt cutter. And I've talked about this before. I, it doesn't matter whether it's an off-road vehicle or an on-road vehicle, you guys should carry a seatbelt cutter. I have been in a few situations where I've had to extract somebody from a vehicle and to be able to do it safely uh, is super important because when that seatbelt locks tight and you need to get that person out of there, the last thing you want to be doing is using a knife that could actually injure the person. So those trauma shears are a great tool. A seatbelt cutter like this is also a great tool, especially on the other side. You can bust a window uh, if you're trying to get out of the vehicle. That's nice to have. So there you go. That's all the stuff that's in my Jeep, and I am ready for Texas. I'm super excited about this trip, guys. Uh, make sure that you're following along on Instagram. I will be posting uh, on Instagram stories along the way. And if you have not checked out our new trailrecon.com website, go check it out. Sign up for our newsletter. Check out the merchandise over there. We're going to have some patches and T-shirts and decals over there, and we've got a lot of good Overland gear. So thanks for hanging out with me today in the garage, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.